Yes, Notion. I've talked about Notion before, but as my brewing processes changes and everything, I want to get back into the topic. I want to talk about chilling in a container like this one, chilling it in different styles of stainless steel cakes, or just leave it in the pot overnight. And also gonna answer some questions I have got and share with you like the simplest recipe I used to brew when I used a no shit container it was back in the days okay let's kick it I'm Dr. Hans this is Dr. Hans Brewery my channel about beer and home brewing this is one of my favorite Czech lager Krusevich, are you having a beer? Let me know what you're having. Sneaky, wasn't it? But as usual, my channel sucks, so you should not subscribe. But I do, pre pre I do appreciate, I should not multitask. I do appreciate a nasty comment on your way out and a thumbs up, of course. Thank you. Yeah. This one also, this is my dear friend. I'm gonna talk about that one. Get yourself a cheap soda stream. Cheers. Is it something wrong to use a container like this? No, it's not. But if you're gonna do it and you're transferring hot, which you should, of course. Yeah, sorry. The best would to be, this is a, t t a 10 liter. When I use this, I often use a 20 liter one. Uh, I would suggest try to purchase it. I used to have a hose from my brewing system and, and uh, perch it with, with that and then filling from the, the bottom to the, uh, to the top. Not splashing it. Try to avoid splashing and uh, of course when we have got most of the air out it should be okay but anyways I would fill from the bottom up. We also gonna run through how to convert a uh, beer recipe to no shield, not skip over it, maybe not go in depth, this video will go on for hours. But isn't it good to aerate, oxygenate your wort? Not at this stage, not when the, the, the wort is hot. You don't want to do that. You're only oxidizing the wort over, overnight. So oxygenate the next day. You also want to like turn it so you're feeling hot water, so you sanitize it. Even if you have sanitized it before, you're like sanitize it and again with the hot water. So let it sit like that. For the simple recipe I'm gonna share, I didn't add any hops in the kettle at all. It's an IPA recipe. One benefit of getting the wort into a container of any sort is that you can clean the kettle on brew day. But that can also be a disadvantage. Maybe you want a fast brew day so, and you want to clean your kettle the next day. Then you could just leave it in the kettle instead. And I just put some plastic wrap and put the lid on so I don't any, get any bugs in it. I don't try to purge anything with C2 or anything. You don't really have to worry so much about surface oxygenization. It's so little surface if we compare with like splashing. I wouldn't be worried about that. If you're already worried about that, you could like tuck in the, the plastic film on top of the whole hot wort. And then I also wrap the whole container. Sometimes I've also like put a big plastic bag over the whole kettle. Well, so that is often my most preferred method of doing it. I will link down below to that video where I go a little more in depth on that style. If you watched my last brewing video, it's gonna be grain to glass videos and yeast comparison videos to come. But I'm waiting for, for those three beers to settle down because I want to compare those three with flavor, of course, with uh, fermentation and uh, also flocculation. So I'm waiting for them to clear up a little bit so we can get a better, better picture of the three different yeasts. Then you saw me transferring hot wort 
into three different vessels and I think stainless steel vessels are awesome for this. What I did in that brew was that I let the hop sit, did a whirlpool and then transfer the wort. I purged all of my three vessels with CO2 and uh, of course turned them outside and everything so we get contact everywhere. Yes, I have sanitized everything and all of that. I did ferment in the cakes, fermenting under pressure and had one mini keg and one keg mentor. If you're using a Cornelius keg, I actually recommend that you put some pressure on this. You won't believe the amount I hate myself right now. So my camera, this is a couple of days later, was an editing and I realized that my camera did not focus on me, it decided to focus on the background. So I recorded it all over again. No, I didn't. I forgot to press the record button. I'm telling you, my channel sucks. This is... I don't know even now how to make content. So, third time is the charm. I'm finishing this video for you, so... Please just give it a like and a nasty comment. Super chat for a, for a new beer, because I... This is, this, this is homebrew now. This is from... Um, I want... I'm waiting for this to clear up a little bit. This is from my last brew video, if you saw that. So I think I won't wait a little bit longer because I want a little bit clearer to better see the difference with the, with the three different yeasts I used. Cheers! Spoiler alert! Nice beer! So, grain to gloss, video to follow, recipe to download, yeast comparison videos, yada 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 don't subscribe. Where were we? With the, the Cornelius keg? Yes, uh, because of the design of the, of the Cornelius keg, like, the lid is pushed up by the pressure, so therefore, as when the wort cools down, and the headspace also, you will, get, you will lose pressure, that, therefore I push like uh, three or four bars on there, so it has some extra pressure on there, for it to, for when it cools down and, and the uh, pressure reduced. I got the question, and it, this has nothing to do with, with if you're pushing extra gas on there or not. Will it implode? Deflate? Implode? Implode is much, much better. I'm not, I'm, 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 English is not my native tongue and, and I've struggled a lot in this video, I know, sorry about that. I'm from Sweden. My English sucks. No, it has never happened to me. No, you don't have to worry about that. It will not implode. I've done with Cornelius keg, I used mini cakes, I have used my keg mentor for no shill. No, it's, it's not gonna be an issue. Hopefully. No, it's not gonna be an issue. Sorry. One cool thing is I really like leaving it in the in the pot, and I will link down to below to the video in the pot in the kettle. I will link down below to the video where I talk about how, why, and, and yada yada that. Okay, but one cool thing with getting it into a keg. Is if you have a swimming pool or you have a lake nearby or sea or whatever, you could actually like throw the keg or the container into the swimming pool and cool it down that way much faster. But as I'm gonna share how I convert my Noshi recipes, that does not really apply anymore. This is for leaving it for overnight hot. So you have to do that moth yourself, you will probably be more looking into normal brewing recipes. Normal. What, what is normal anyway? I'm not normal. Don't be normal. It's be strange. Here in my forest, uh, we have water from the lake where we can use to like in the garden and uh, water our flowers and so on. I, 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 so I have how much water I want in the summertime, but in the winter time, I don't have any running water outside and I do all my brewing outside. So that means half of the year I'm doing no chill always. And in the summertime I can chill my wort. But we have like hoses from the lake laying out in the sun. So it's, it's, it's often hard to get the exact temperature that you want. We we'll never get the into like uh, normal log. I'm, I'm, I'm there with the normal again. Normal log temperatures. Right? You wouldn't even get that maybe with, with, with no shield in the summer, but I ferment under pressure, so I don't have to care about that. 
The notion method comes from Australia and where they have had a water like shortage for a very long time. But now we see more water restrictions all over the globe. So I'm thinking that notion is probably something that more people will have to start off by necessary. But there's also some really cool things about notion. You can split up your brew day. If you just leave it in the kettle, you can do the cleaning the other day. And also we get into the conversion side of it, you can start to think that maybe we have some benefits here also for some beer style and for others maybe don't. Maybe not. Before we get into conversions, a big shout to my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for your ongoing support and for letting me bitch and pull my heart out in my BTS videos. And uh, of course, nice seeing you chatting on the Discord. Cheers. The easiest way to think about conversion when doing no-shield is to think that you actually boiled your wort 20 minutes longer. So at the end of the boil you have you have in your head or your calculator boiled it for 20 minutes longer. That means that the flame out edition is actually a 20 minute boil edition in the calculated time. The 50 minute edition which you add at 50 minutes left is actually a 35 minute edition. So you have to start at the end of the hop schedule. I'm not talking about dry hopping now. You have to start at the end of the hop schedule and go from that. And you might see that you have to ditch something. The bitterness edition have to go. Okay, so we're saving some money there. And you might have to like change something out or move something forward. But as I said, I'm also gonna share a simple recipe uh, but the idea of that simple recipe, I won't go through it here because I need to find some files. I'll put it for like a download. I think I might do it. As, uh, yes, I would do it as a smash. But the, the idea is to use a no shield container. So say we have a 20 liter no shield container. I'll put 100 grams of hops in there. I'm, I'm thinking IPA is stylish. So I'm thinking uh, using like a normal high alpha acid American hops. Like an Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra, Mosaic, something in that. What, what is that? Like 10 to 15 uh, IBUs, maybe? IBUs? 10 to 15 percent, sorry, alpha acid. So we add that to the to the cake. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would purge the container from CO2 because I don't want that splashing. It will still splash, but I will purge it and I will fill from the bottom with the hose. Just let that cool down overnight. Of course, tip around the container so, so everything will get touched with the hot wort. But don't think that you, with your mastermind there, have find a sheet code. You can just pull out the hops, the hops bags or the hop spider and you don't have to recalculate your recipe. No, no, it does not, not work that way. Even though you pull your hop bags out, you pull your hop spider out, the wort will still continue to bitter overnight. It's not about leaving hops there. You all add the hops, it's all done. You have to add another 20 minutes to it. But the cool thing with like adding it into a container or adding all of the hops, well, but the, the, the hops you actually add a flame out is that you're calculating the bitterness as a 20 minute addition from that addition, but you're getting no boil off of flavors. That means this is awesome for hoppy beers. And in that recipe, I used 100 grams of hops, 20 liters of wort, and the next day I separated with the, the sieve, the, the hops from the wort. It's a little bit messy to clean that up, of course, but it's always gonna be a mess somewhere in the brewing chain. And then at the end of fermentation, I dried hop with another 100 gram hops. And those beer came out really good. Don't think like, this is home brewing. If you don't like really screw it up, you will always end up with like some sort of balanced beer. And calculations are only calculations. If you stick with like normal range, like I said, like your normal like American Sea Hops or whatever in that range, high alpha, not super high alpha. If you change out to like 24% uh, alpha acid, of course, it's, it's gonna screw up. But it doesn't really matter that much. It won't be changed. It won't really be, oh, now it's too bitter, now it's too sweet. It's just calculations. Try it out. Just swap it. What, one brew you do with Amarillo, one, one brew what you're doing with Citra, one we don't say no we don't it's not gonna really be massive difference 
even though like the percentage is off by a few points. Is that? But yeah, but if we're thinking like, okay, I'm, I'm sticking in this 10, 10 to 14 uh, percentage. If we are looking like a log beer, so I would do it that way, I would have to add a lot of German noble low alpha acid hops and no boil off of, of, of aromas and flavors. Doesn't make any sense. You would get a oh, really screwed up lager. So I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I would not do it that way. Then I would much rather like add hops into the, to, to the boil and get the bitterness. You know, for, for, for uh, if you're just for, out for clean lager, you don't even need any like aroma and flavor hops. Believe me, you try to just add like a bit tradition. You will save money. And it might come closer to what you actually wanted. And I always find like, now I'm just rambling, but gonna get to a point here. People are starting to add like bit tradition, uh, 40 munition, 30 munition, 20 munition, 5, 50 munition, and you're stacking those on top. I've never really made any sense to me. And you, you should know uh, about hops and bittering. You don't need to boil your hops to get bitterness. It just needs the heat. So if you add it hops to the container, pour the hot water on top, you're getting a 20 minute boil time of bitterness from those hops. You don't need to pull your hops to get bitterness, you don't need a bitter addition. I heard so much bad advice. Whatever recipe I do, I start at the end. Is that a hop stand? Is that, is that a flame out? Or what is it? And then I calculate. And sometimes you, you could get more punch of flavors if you add your hops late. You don't need, you don't need like a bitter addition. Some people think that they need to have a bit tradition first and then they work their, from the from the first edition, the bit tradition, they work their way to the end. Nope, I would not suggest that. But I will link down below to recipe you can download and you can try to like swap up the hops. You swap up the molds, do whatever you want. It's, it's just an example. In this video, I talked about why I prefer the, uh, the kettle, just leaving it overnight. So if you haven't seen that one, check that, that one out. Blah blah blah. Thanks and all. Score. Cheers. Dog turns out.